Bone meal, it just seemed kind of, you know. Um, I should say that this recipe actually came started from a guy named Vic High, who actually bred a strain called Killer Queen. And uh, I learned this recipe from him, but it was much simpler. It, it was just, um, his even had chicken manure in it. And it was just a much simpler recipe. I, I, I just played around. Every time I go to the grocery store, I buy something else and throw it in there and see what happens. And a lot of those products aren't in here anymore. Notice rock phosphate's not on the list. If you guys look online, you might see that rock phosphate was in the list. Why did I use rock phosphate? Because I had a box of it. And I said, well, let's see what happens with rock phosphate. But then I read there may be heavy minerals in rock phosphates, you know, metals and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, I don't really think that arsenic and stuff may be something I want to put in my plant. So I just left the rock phosphate out. A lot of times what I do is just not really that. It's literally that, that was my thought process. Hey, I got this stuff. Let's use it. Huh. This stuff might not be really good. Let's not use it. That's literally the thought process involved. So. Um, you had a question with the hat right there? Now he's looking down. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what size uh, bags of uh, soil? Like if we use, if we're experimenting with different soil, like just, uh, uh, I think this is, five, this is 42 dry liters, but it's one and a half cubic feet. Is what I'm say. So, like, uh, Happy Frog comes to two cubic feet. It's a little bit bigger. It's also so heavy you can go carry the damn thing around the house. So, yeah, yeah, that's a heavy bag, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got some of them in my house right now. So, um, go ahead. Did you say you put a lid on that for a while? Yeah, I put it in the garbage can and I just I just put a lid on top of it and then I just leave it. Um, I think it's really important for a couple of reasons. One, that whole condensation effect. But the other, I mean, there's lots of crap flying around in the air. I mean, I'm not worried about pests getting in the soil. That's something I, th I think we should cover here. I don't know why a bug would eat dirt. I mean, bugs don't necessarily eat dirt. They eat plants. So a lot of people said, oh, I'm worried about putting the soil outside because it might get infected with bugs. Well, bugs don't really live in dirt. They live, not bugs that eat plants. So I'm not worried about that. But I do worry about all the spores and stuff flying around, little seedlings and stuff flying through the air. I mean, <laughs> mushrooms and, I mean, God knows what growing up in here. So let me just cover that real quick. And, uh, I leave it covered, and uh, about uh, three weeks after I make it, I will go assess it. Uh, if it's dry, I could add some more water. Um, we don't ever want to turn it into mud. And if your superstore ever starts smelling like ammonia or starts smelling like poop, you put too much water on it. It doesn't stink. I mean, it, my room smells like dirt. It doesn't smell like poop or anything sour like that. But if you put too much water on it. Is that it for soil? Oh, we've got one. I just had a question about, you say you put it outside and during the winter it's a little bit cold, so it'll activate during certain months. Inside would be better. And is there something to keep you from just putting it away in a closet or a bathroom? I don't have room. You just don't have room? I just don't have room. Or release any kind of thing? No, no. I would not be, again, I, when I lived in Winnipeg, I just put it inside. We grew in the basement, and I just put it in the corner so of the road. Not much of a smell or anything? No, it really, as long as you don't add too much water to it, it doesn't really stink. Now, if you add water to it, you know, it just, it can rot. It becomes sour and starts smelling. But it smells like dirt to me. I actually like what it smells. You know, I, that's a really good question. That is an awesome question. It generates its own heat. So it gets hot. I mean, if you do it right, when you shove your arm down in there, it's hot as hell. I would say it's 100 degrees. I, I don't know the scientific answer to that question. I'm sorry. We, we, we want it to be um, activated so it needs to be in normal temperature. And if it feels hot, and it's doing its job. That heat is what creates that condensation. You'll get temperature variation, the outdoor temperature variation with what your makeup is, yeah. your soil. Yeah. Everything's going to change that. So the air conditioning system is going to change the temperature. And, and the, 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 the one thing I would like to say about Super Soul, two things. It does vary. Even if you make this exact same recipe, and these guys are mixing up the soil and they're being as close as they can, but it does vary. This is my favorite thing about super soil, and if I, could, if I could share this with you. If you get a batch right, and you grow a crop, and it is the best crop you've ever produced, and you've got three jugs of that shit sitting outside, what is your future grow room looking like? Right? There's no more, oh my god, do I need to add something? Do I need to take something away? It's right. Yeah, like cocoa, can this be reused at least one more time? Or? That is a really good question. That is like... The best question asked today. Thank you. I have to go write this book, and there's a chapter on reusing the soil, and I don't know how to reuse the damn soil properly. So, if you reuse it, 
you get good results and there are people online that reuse my soil as is. I never got the same results with a used batch as I did with a fresh batch. I've done two different things. I've tried cutting back some of the nutrients, like I put uh, half a load of blood meal, bone meal, some Epsom salt, some lime. Okay, we're just trying to add it back. But someone that's actually much smarter about me, about me than the soil told me that it has to be inoculated. So all those roots and everything that are in there, they have to actually compost back down or you can't use that soil. So what I do with it may seem a little wasteful. I simply put it onto the, uh, in my garden on my yard uh, at around $80 to $100 per crop. That's just not something I'm willing to take a risk on. Having said that, you can absolutely figure it out if you took the time. And there are guys that use super soil in beds. They're not changing it out. They're just using their beds and they're getting up to four or five crops before they change it out. Again, because of the cost, I mean, we're talking about the cost of two gallons of bud candy is what a crop costs me. So I would just rather start from fresh. I wish I knew exactly how to tell you guys put this, this, and this on it, and let it sit for two months, and then we can reuse it. I will tell you this. If you put this shit in your vegetable garden on anything but tomato plants, it'll kill. Use super soil. It'll kill squash, pumpkins, spinach. Oh, dude. You'll be giving tomatoes to everybody in this room. I have no, and, and, and raspberries, too. Do what now? No, I haven't. I bet it would work because it's the same genus. You know? Super soil test on the sludge test about 4,100 parts per million. So a sludge test is not really that accurate because you're getting mud and, and you know what I'm talking about. You do a runoff test and you test for parts per million, so it's not accurate. But we know it's hot, and uh, so that's why we don't print directly in it. Uh, I think we're at the end of soil, so we'll go to the next, so we can actually get. I I, one more question on that is one of the problems I have using the uh, the moss, the soilless mix, is compacting. What can I do to keep the soil from turning into a plug? Make super soil. I mean, is there a, 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 an amendment? Or, uh, like, no, I don't do anything different okay. than what you see here. I mean, don't literally, dry what out. we got to do with you is we got to convince you that I'm not crazy and you actually try my method. That's really all there is to it. You're going to want to try to incorporate your method with my method. It doesn't work. Try my methods once. Prove me wrong. Regular root. We're going to do this in the transplant. We're going to cover We just use regular roots. There's nothing in it. We just use that all the way throughout the edge. Yeah. So in the super soil, we'll actually do it a little bit. I fill it to about here with super soil. Then I put about two inches of roots in there. I kind of make a buffer with my hand so that when I stick the clone down in there, it's not touching the super soil. It has a buffer to go through. And then I actually build a basket with the roots itself. So it's nestled in this nice basket of, of roots. So you're wrapping the roots around the place and putting the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happens is, is it starts to grow. It gets a little of the roots and then it gets the roots super soil and then it gets pure roots. And you can actually see the plant. It'll stand straight up in the air. You know when you get it right. We call it turgidity. It's one of my favorite. You just know. It. You know when you go in there in the morning after water, and every single plant in your garden's going. You, you got it right. Yeah. Go ahead. These are forty-five gallon just cans of Aquaman. You know the whole water thing has a lot to do with the climate. We could spend a lot more time on that in Arizona. You're probably going to need the four, four or five gallon bucket of water on there. In Oregon and, and Washington, less. You know, and that's something I, I learned. I had a, nothing to do with this, but just on climate. I had one of the, the best growers I know move to Arizona and he couldn't grow pot anymore because he couldn't clone at all. He would take the dome off the clones, fully rooted, and they would fall over dead. He said, What the fuck? It's 7% humidity in my house. It took him an entire year to learn to grow it. He built a tent around his grow tent. And he would go inside the grow tent to take the dump. So climate makes a lot. I can only teach you how to grow here, Georgia, and Winnipeg. That's where I live. So, 
Uh, and, it, and you know, Florida, I'll talk just two seconds on that. Florida's a different climate because your air conditioner's running 25. I didn't know what mildew was until I came here. There's no mold and mildew in Florida. It doesn't matter what temperature your grow room is in Florida. If it's 100 degrees, it doesn't matter. The air conditioner's going, wah, and never shut it on. So I came here and I started, I was here about, what, two years before we first saw mildew? I was like, what's this white shit all over my plant? And the next day I was like, oh my god. You know, and I had to learn about mildew. So, um, where's Stephanie going? You got another question? Uh, what brand of uh, worm casting do you really like? The wiggle worm is really good. Wonder worm. Yeah, the wiggle worm. Wonder worm. Wonder worm, sorry. Wonder worm. And then the other thing is, uh, how much of the acid do you use if you're using the roots and you do have a lot of the gnats? Oh, if the asthma is two ounces per gallon. Two ounces per gallon. Yeah, it's the maximum amount on the label. I think that's 15 milliliters is two ounces. Right? Two ounces. So 50 milliliters is one ounce, right? Okay, never mind. It's two ounces. It's on the label. It's the maximum amount. It's two ounces per gallon. I need mean to get metric. What's your feeling on cultivating your own worm castings? And you know, if you got time for that, great, you know? I got a bunch of plants I gotta trim. I don't have time for that, but I think it's awesome. <laughs> There's a great article in here, and this is the new skunk we were talking about last night by the Rev. The Rev is a co, whatever he's a co, what I do. He teaches people to grow. And he teaches people how to make an awesome, do what, baby? Okay, he teaches you how to make an awesome um, um, worm farm in your own closet and everything. But you know, worm castings are not that expensive. And I would say focus your efforts on dank, not on worm castings. What, what if you actually had worms in your pot? Is that something? Oh, you know, that means your soil's good. I used to, when I first started doing this, I used to actually, I've done some stupid shit. I used to put the worms in the pot because I figured, you know, if the worms live, then, then the soil's okay. Now nah, they crawl out and get under the HID lighting and turn into the slimy spot on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go with the next. We are going to do, what time is it? Can we go without a break? Can everybody just go? Can we just go? We good? Okay. Yeah, this is not that long. I'm not going to get mad or heckle anymore. Again, I appreciate you guys coming. I hope you guys are learning something. I hope I'm not looking too much like a minute up here. Okay, we got a little more reading to do. In this section, we will discuss the construction of a proper grow area. There are several key areas I would like to cover, but there is no one way. And these are just only methods, they're not the only methods that can be used. With the invention of grow huts and even larger enclosed personal grow areas, it has become easy to set up a space. I like to do things on a bigger scale because I am teaching the craft of indoor growing as a caregiver for other patients. We still only bud 12 plants at one time. But we do grow year-round in order to do this. You must have complete control of your grow and environment. This is the part of the course you guys are not going to like. This is the part where I tell you it costs a lot of money to go pot in yours. Insulation is critical in controlling temperature swings and energy consumption is also provides soundproofing. Security is also important. This is not taking everyone's views on a special plant as medicine, but for cash for the taking. You know, we may be legal, but you can't skip smell control. I mean, you can't have all your neighbors knowing you're growing dank. It's just the way it is. Um, durability is a must if you're going to run crop after crop after crop. If you buy the cheap stuff, you know, I run 365 days a year without stopping the ballast, the fans, they don't shut off. You've got to buy the expensive stuff. Uh, discretion is crucial, and even a legal garden, to prevent judgmental neighbors causing problems. So. We're going to talk about room construction. Now, in the slides here, I thought it would be kind of cool to show you a couple of different ways that we, I have actually grown cannabis on the Pacific Northwest. And I have a pretty nice grow room now. It's not as nice as my partner's because he always upscales me when he does things. But um, we don't have to start there. So these are the things I was talking about a while ago. I should have brought these up. That would have been smart. You did a really good job, Stephanie, wherever she went. <laughs> Okay, so this is an upstairs bonus room. 
Um, I hope my butt crack's not showing. Um, well, the reason I'm showing this is to show what's important to take care of a room. Um, these walls are actually uh, cello text walls. You can get them from like Lowe's or Home Depot. It's that uh, three-quarter of an inch insulation. And I just put the mylar, well this is actually foil line, but I put the foil line on top of the panel so I could move the panels around. This was a house we rented. So I couldn't screw the house up. I couldn't drill holes in the wall or stuff like that. So I actually, these are actually knee walls. There's, there's room behind these that I just built. I put the mylar on. I bought a really nice thick tarp, and you'll see a better picture in just a second of the two by four. I actually built a pan. So I stapled it all up really good. I brought this up about 12 inches. See it coming all the way around about 12 inches? Simple line, I mean, this is just a no-brainer. See this two by two here? So I rolled the tarp up on the two by two backwards and I made a two inch pan. And it held water because if you grow a pot, you spill water. <laughs> and I spilled water in this room. So just a simple way to knock it out. This was just a little bedroom. And then once this door was closed, you can see I blanked it off with black whiskey. There was no light shining through or anything. Nobody knew when we were growing. We had pops in our house one day, not because of anything we did wrong. They were just there. The pot was literally six foot from his head. I thought it was kind of cool. So there's a door open. And again, on some of the walls, I actually put a temporary uh, particle board in to put my fans in. Because again, I couldn't drill holes in their walls. I had to make my own walls. So this is another place that we actually moved to. And uh, this we rented from one of those uh, real estate places, you know what I mean? When you have to go and there's like 50 people in your house at all times. So we really couldn't make a mess in this house. So we built a freestanding area out of two by twos and particle board. This thing is not screwed anywhere to this building. It's actually pretty hard to build. Um, so whatever it takes to build it. This was inside of a 20 by 24 garage. Just a couple of pictures of the lights. You can see all this above. All this was framed out. You could actually crawl on top of this. And the reason it had a top so I could put all my fans, my electrical, my lights. So whatever it takes. I am not a fan of grow tents. I gotta tell you that right now. Uh, I don't think the air circulates around in them. I see people have more problems with them than, than, than getting good results with them. Um, we have a good friend, Dix, grows in the grow tents. He grows in really big grow tents. So, but those little like six by fours, I, I just couldn't, I can't see it. So, so there we are loaded up. One thing you'll see common, I hope you will see common in my grow rooms, is neatness. I am a dirt grower, but you notice there's not crap all over the floor. And you gotta keep your grow room dirty. If I see a picture of your grow room and it's dirty, bet your ass you got mites. Bet your ass you got mites if your grow room's dirty. So if your grow room's clean, you still might have mites, but you stand a better chance of not having pests if your grow room's clean. Okay. Now we're going to talk about really going crazy and building a grow room like, like you should build a grow room. I'll get to questions after I get to it, okay? Um, so basically what I did was this is another garage, but since this was a house that I actually owned and didn't rent, I wanted to build it permanent, secure. And so I just took the garage and framed it out. We built a bedroom one, a bedroom two. These numbers, of, the number of bedrooms and bedrooms become important later when we get into um, crop management. I literally never stop budding. The day I harvest, there's another crop loaded in the room that is ready to bud. If I'm doing my job, I can actually flip the bedroom lights back to 12-12 and have them start budding about a week before while I'm trimming, because trimming takes a while. Insulation is so damned important when it's 100 degrees outside or it's 20 degrees inside and you're trying to control it. Insulation is always cheaper to put in than it is to run heaters and air conditioners. So two things to really understand about building a grow room is insulation is, is cheaper and moving air is always cheaper than cooling air. Does everybody understand that simple? To move air through the room is going to be cheaper than trying to put a 10,000 BTU air conditioner and cool the lights off. We move, we move on 800 CFM through our lights. Our lights you can touch the lenses because that's cheaper than trying to cool them. Again, we want to frame it up, lots of electricity. I'll show you the panels at the end. We actually brought a brand new sub panel into this because when you're plugging in five 1,000 watt lights, three humidifiers, four air conditioners, six fans, and 
two computers. I mean, you got to have a lot of power. Don't try to run a damn extension cord to power four 1,000 watt lights. You know, don't don't do stupid stuff like cut the ground off. I mean, I'm going to assume that this is this is kind of advanced knowledge, but I'm going to assume you know not to do stupid things like that. You know, you you, you have to make the proper equipment. Let me just get through the slides and look at all the questions. I'll lose my train of thought if not. Again, just simple framing it up. We went. This is where the air conditioner went. Um, so we used actually wood on the back wall instead of sheetrock because I was worried about the sheetrock deteriorating through some type of humidity. So I went ahead and everything else is sheetrock but where the air conditioner goes. So I used particle board to paint it there. Nice door so we can lock it up and secure it. Um, you know, by law, you guys are supposed to be able to lock your grow rooms. I don't know if you guys know that, but sometimes people don't read the whole law. But you're supposed to be able to lock your grow rooms. Well, we're, 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 right now we're talking about indoors. So. And again, we just finished framing it up really nice. I am not the best sheetrocker in the world, I gotta tell you. Um, so if you are a poor sheetrocker, there's no reason you couldn't just use wood. I think a lot of people that I teach didn't use the sheetrock because it's such a pain in the ass. It's full disclosure, when you work with sheetrock, it costs you as much to throw the scrap away as it does to buy the sheetrock. So I don't know how many people are under construction or building their own grow rooms because we're not carpenters, you know. But if you go out and spend, say, three, four hundred dollars on sheetrock and cut all this out, you're going to spend one hundred and fifty dollars taking the rest of the dump because they charge you ninety dollars a ton for sheetrock. It's just crazy. So anyway, I would use wood. This may seem like a stupid picture, but I really think everybody should invest in these. These are horse stall mats. And uh, they're really heavy and they're hard to get into your grow room, but they prevent the bottom of your plants from getting cold. Um, they're really nice to walk and sit on while you're working because concrete really hurts and I spend a lot of time in my grow room. 